Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode one of Baseball Ramble. Uh, This is basically just going to be a podcast where we talk about the news, rumors about possible transactions that could be happening this offseason. Obviously, once we get in season, it'd be a lot more about actual baseball. But as of now, we kind of just have to talk about offseason stuff because obviously we're right smack dab in the middle of the offseason. So we're just going to get right into the news. There's no time to waste here. Obviously, the big news of the past, well, for me, 24 hours, by the time you are listening to this, probably longer than that, the Astros got their punishments for cheating in the 2017 World Series. So obviously, A.J. Hinch, their manager, and Jeff Lunau, their general manager, both got one-year suspensions from baseball so obviously neither of those guys are going to be appearing at all in 2020 uh the team got a five million dollar fine which i don't really know how much money that is like compared to how much money the astros own jim crane's probably a pretty rich dude and they spend over 200 million dollars on their salary or their payroll so i don't really know how big that is, but also probably the biggest part for them is uh, losing their first and second round draft picks for not only the 2020 draft, but also the draft after that, 2021, that the Houston Astros aren't going to draft the first or second round player until the 2022 draft. And I don't know if some people realize how huge that is, just because a lot of the players who turn out to be studs, like, obviously there's a ton of players who are, like, 10th round or 20, even 20th round draft picks that end up being really good as a Cardinals fan. Uh, First base, our first baseman, Paul Goldschmidt, he, I, I don't remember exactly when he was drafted, but he was drafted way, 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 way late into the draft. But a lot of the Mike Trout, Bryce Harper, Steven Strasburg, Garrett Cole type of names were drafted, especially very early in the first round, not to mention the entire second round as well. And then probably even the bigger news was Jim Crane, the Astros owner, announced yesterday that they will be firing A.J. Hinch and Jeff Lunau. And, uh, I, I'm blanking on his name. It's something along the lines of uh, Pete Putilla, I believe. Their assistant general manager is expected to take over um, part of what Jeff Luna was doing. And then Joe Espada, who uh, a lot of you will know from – he was trying to get a managerial job this offseason, and I personally think he should have been absolutely hired by someone. But it sounds like he's going to end up with a job anyway. It sounds like as of right now, he's going to be the Houston Astros manager – for at least the 2020 season. And this just has a huge ripple effect across baseball because not only has the guy who basically constructed one of the best lineups in history this season, you had Robinson Trinos, Yuli Gurriel, Jose Altuve, Carlos Correa, Alex Bregman, Michael Brantley, George Springer, Josh Reddick, Jordan Alvarez, and then you had the Justin Verlander, Garrett Cole, Roberto Osuna, which obviously is its own controversy. Um, Ryan Presley, Will Harris. I mean, so many good players on the Houston Astros. They made the play after just being one of the worst teams we've ever seen in recent memory. They made the playoffs for the last five seasons. Obviously, 2017, which is the year that they cheated won the World Series 2018. They made it to to the American League Championship Series. And then again this year, obviously, made it to the World Series, losing to the Washington Nationals in seven games. But one of the best, basically the guy who constructed this amazing roster is gone. And one of the, what, what people say is one of the best managers in baseball, one of the smartest guys, one of the smartest dudes in the entire game, A.J. Hinch, is going to be out of a job. Now, I expect, I don't know about Jeff Lunau, because I think he's the prime suspect for the guy who said, let's do this thing. 
But I think A.J. Hinch is going to land on his feet. I think he's going to be getting at least interviews next offseason, and I expect him to have a job within the next few seasons because he's just too smart of a guy for teams not to be diving after. But this just – the ripple effect – Baseball is going to be – hopefully teams are not going to be doing this. Now, we know nothing of teams doing this in the 2019 season, but obviously it took t- two years for the Astros stuff to come out, so you just never know. But hopefully teams are going to see this and be like, I would rather not fire my manager and general manager. I would rather not um, lose two years' worth of top draft picks I'm not sure if it's going to completely stop it because this was not – a lot of people are saying strip the title, but I think that's a little ridiculous just because you can't take away history. You can't strip titles from baseball. That's just a – like Barry Bonds back when he was doing his steroids, they didn't take away his MVPs. They didn't take away his home runs. They didn't take away his home run record, and that shouldn't have happened because it's just a part of history now. And yes, there should absolutely be, when you think of the 2017 Houston Astros, you should absolutely think of the cheaters that they were. But just saying they shouldn't even be the 2017 champions, what? Are you just going to, are we just going to say either replay the 2017 playoffs, which would obviously be just idiotic and a waste of time because baseball is unpredictable and for all we know the bracket would completely change Uh, that would just be a disaster um or you're we're just gonna say well that yeah that 2017 season really meant absolutely nothing because the world series winner there is none because the astros cheated and then the people saying the dodgers should be given it i think that's even worse because i I've, and I've only seen that suggestion from Dodgers fans. I don't actually think a reasonable person outside of that fan base thinks that the Dodgers should be now awarded the 2017 World Series Championship. But that's enough about the Astros. Let's get on to the Red Sox, who have also the 2018, uh, not Astros, Red Sox. Now, there's no proof like there is for the Astros that they've done this in the postseason. But basically what the Red Sox did was, for those of you who have not heard, they had the same kind of camera the Astros had, but it wasn't a live feed in the dugout. It was actually a, uh, they went back into a replay room. And so a a position player could watch that, see see the um, catcher signals. And then if you got on base, you could relay those signals to the batter. So Obviously, doing that on your own, like if you're on second base and you're like, "Oh yeah, these are the, um, these are the signals for this catcher," that would obviously be legal. But the technology part is what makes it illegal. And this obviously is not as big or like bad, I would say, as the Astros. But it's the same idea. It's I'd say it's the same amount of morality the low morale, just cheating. And there's one common link, and this has caused a lot of speculation, Alex Cora. Alex Cora was the bench coach of the 2017 Astros, and then he was hired by the Red Sox the next offseason. And apparently he brought this cheating right into Boston, and reports are saying Alex Cora isn't likely to get the same punishment, the one-year suspension as A.J. Hinch and Jeff Lunau. I believe it was Jeff Passan who said Alex Cora's um, punishment might be much worse. And that is, like, I I don't even know what is much worse. Because if it's a two-year suspension, I wouldn't say that's much worse. I would say that's appropriate. He cheated on two teams. He gets two years. So, He's not, I don't think at this point, he's, I've heard some people say, well, he was just a cheater, just like them. He should get the same punishment. But I don't think that's right because I think, yes, the Astros cheated. But what Alex Cora did was he brought that cheating into a different organization. So now that there's two organizations cheating that we know of, there may be 
five organizations. There may be 15 organizations. There may be 30 organizations cheating. Um, but like, what is much worse? And that brings up the possibility. Will Alex Cora be get a lifetime ban from Major League Baseball? And I've seen people suggest that. And I'm just like, okay, I understand he was on two teams. But man, lifelong banning, that is extreme. And yes, this is if this was like a – if this kept happening, if we get like a new cheating scandal every few months, it would basically ruin the game of baseball because we would be – my dad compared – he, he, we were talking about this, and he said, if this happens, baseball is not really going to be that much different from WWE. It's going to be entertaining, but it's not going to be – it's almost scripted for the cheater to win. It's – and you may say, well, it's not really scripted. Well, if two straight World Series champion teams cheated, it really is scripted. And it's like – this is just going to ruin stories. Like, what if it comes out that the 2019 Washington Nationals cheated? I mean, that team was such an underdog. They were 12 games below 500 in May. They were a wild card team. The only reason, or not the only reason, but the main reason they won that game was because Trent Grisham misfielded a bad hop. And then they hit it. Howie Kendrick became Superman and hit a clutch grand slam. Go ahead, Grand Slam against the Dodgers in the NLDS. The Washington Nationals obviously got rid of the Cardinals easily. And then they won. And then they were the scrappy underdogs against this historically good Houston Astros team. And what if they were if they cheated, that would just ruin it. That would just ruin the story because you feel so good for many of these Nationals players. You feel super good for Anthony Rendon because he's a super likable guy. You feel good for Steven Strasburg because we've been paying attention to this guy forever. And now he got his, his ring. You feel good for guys like Ryan Zimmerman, obviously, who's been there his whole career. You feel good for Howie Kendrick, who just turned into Barry Bonds in the playoffs. And Juan Soto. Uh, Jan Gomes apparently was just, like, one of the happiest guys in the world. Like, after that, I it would just be a disaster if the if this continues. So that's, uh, yeah, I just talked about cheating for almost 13 minutes, and that's never a good sign. So let's get on to actual, uh, well, right now we're going to talk about rumors. We're, we'll get on to the recent moves later. But the rumors of the offseason, the big rumor right now is my own St. Louis Cardinals are apparently going to trade, well, not apparently going to trade, are trying to trade for star third baseman, Nolan Arenado, who is no doubt a top 15 player in the game of baseball. So, Cardinals and Rockies, these rumors have probably been going on for about a week. Uh, I'm going to talk about my own fandom for a second. I don't know how much you're going to like that, but I'm going to do it. So, two off seasons ago, Cardinals basically had a deal done for Stanton. And I was so excited. We're the Cardinals were about to get the 2017 National League MVP and add it to their team. But Stanton said no, and, you know. And then, next last offseason, the Cardinals were kind of – they were kind of getting in that Bryce Harper rumors. They were trying to get involved in that. And then all of a sudden, uh, John Mosellock, their president of baseball operations, said, no, we're not doing that. Very disappointing. So I came into this offseason saying, you know what, I'm not going to get my hopes high at all. I'm just going to sit back and watch the offseason unfold. I'm going to watch some football. I'm going to watch some basketball. I'm not going to worry about the Cardinals. I'm going to watch them re-sign Wayno. I'm going to watch them sign Quang Hyun Kim. I'm going to watch them trade for Austin Dean. And then the Arenado rumors come in and just blow it up because I really would like Arenado. But I'm going to continue with the... Uh, you know, expectation killing. Jeff Passan came out today and said, basically, yeah, all these Cardinals, Rockies rumors, yeah, they've talked about who who would be in a deal. Yeah, Dakota Hudson, yeah, Tyler O'Neill, yeah, Nolan Gorman, yeah, Matt Libertor. But these talks have not been productive and they've gone nowhere. 
And I don't know whether that's a good thing or bad thing, but we, it's just at this point, ru- the rumors are all over the place. I have, I almost have a feeling that John Morosi, I mean, I know he's a credible dude, but I feel like he's just kind of acting like there's a story when really it's just John Mosaox having like a two minute phone call with the Rockies front office every day, kind of saying, Hey, what about uh, Dakota Hudson? Hey, wh- what about, uh, will you take Fowler's contract? Like, and they say no, and he hangs up. I just feel like maybe if, if Jeff Passan, who's probably the second most reliable guy outside of Ken Rosenthal, um, if he's saying these talks have gone nowhere, I'm going to believe him, and I'm going to let my expectations stay low, low, low. But now we're going to get on to some Josh Donaldson stuff. So this these rumors aren't really new, but I wanted to talk about the Donaldson market. So he apparently has asked for four years, $110 million. And that's a lot of money to give a 34-year-old third baseman, even if he was amazing, underrated. Um, I Donaldson put up great defensive numbers with that 15 defensive runs saved. Uh, and obviously, uh, baseball savant came out with a new uh, outs above average stat where he was ranked eighth, which is like top 6%, or he had an eight OAA, which was like top 6% in the league. Uh, Donaldson's 259 batting average, 900 OPS, 37 home runs, 94 RBIs. And then for your you sabermetric fans, he had a 132 weighted runs created plus. He had a 377 WOBA, a 387 X WOBA, which is his expected WOBA. In a, almost a five war. I mean, this guy's a stud, but he's 34. And do you really want to give him almost $30 million a year for his age 34 to 37 seasons? It's sounding like the Twins don't want to. It's sounding like the Braves don't want to either. I honestly, at this point, would have thought the Nationals would be the favorite to get him. But there's another reason that I don't think they're going to get him. And we'll get into that later. Um. But who do I think Donaldson's going to go to? I don't think he's going to get the four years, $110 million because that, that report came out a while ago that he was looking for that, and clearly no one's offered him that. But I do think he's going to go to the Braves for about four years, $100 million. I don't. The Twins have had a disappointing offseason. All they've done is re-sign some of their guys like uh, Sergio Romo, Jake Odorizzi, Michael Pineda. They signed Alex Avila to be their backup catcher. Uh, they really haven't done much. And I really did think they were going to sign someone like Zach Wheeler or Hyunjin Ryu. But it's not looking like that. And I don't think they're going to overspend for um, Donaldson. I could definitely see. I, I do think Donaldson's going to be going back to Atlanta. So we'll see how that market develops. I was expecting him to sign sooner. I mean, these the Donaldson rumors have been pretty nonstop for probably since around Christmas or New Year's time so so other two players i would say donaldson's obviously the top guy on the market let's talk about the number two and three guys on the market marcelo zuna and nicholas castellanos both outfielders they were probably the two top outfielders coming in but teams kind of wanted to look at what what's that gonna happen with mookie Betts? do uh do we want to just get him for one year do we want to go into one of these guys i don't think mookie Betts is going to be traded at this point Obviously, uh, Red Sox have come out and said winning is more is a bigger priority than getting under the luxury tax. So I think these two are going to be the top uh, guys. And we did hear the Reds in on these guys, but they signed uh, Shogo Ikiyama uh, from Japan. And they, I think he's their center fielder now. So along with uh, some guys like Jesse Winker, uh, I'm blanking on the Red uh, Reds outfielders right now because I don't have them written down. But the two teams that have been mentioned the most for these two guys are the St. Louis Cardinals and the Texas Rangers. And I do think, I think it's pretty obvious. I'm going to end up jinxing myself. But I do think Nicholas Castellanos is definitely going to the Rangers. Uh, he can play DH there. And if not, I mean, he, he was still kind of awful offensively or defensively, my bad. Negative nine defensive run saved, negative five point two ultimate zone rating, negative six outs above average. All those are pretty awful, but they're not as bad as they have been in past seasons. 
So maybe if there is true improvement in his defense, he can maybe play a bit more right field than he usually would. Uh, join guys like uh, Willie Calhoun and Joey Gallo in that outfield. Joey, uh, Joey Gallo and Nick Castellanos would be fun to watch together. Uh, two guys with a lot of pop. And then I think Ozuna's re-signing with the Cardinals. He's There's been, I mean, as soon as the offseason started, he basically said, this is my top priority is to come back to St. Louis. And ever since his market's heated up a bit with the Cardin- him saying the Cardinals have been on the hunt, He's continued to say, this is my first choice. And I do think that I think he's going to return to the Cardinals. Um, I, I, yeah, I, that's all I have to say. I, th- I don't think, I don't think there's very many teams in on, uh, uh Marcelo Zuna and Nick Castellanos. Um, just because neither of them are really complete players. Ozuna. I mean, ever since his 2017 season, people have been saying he's underperformed. But this year, he was um, he actually had the biggest difference between his expected weighted on base average, his ex woba, and his actual weighted on base average. He had a he had a 337 um, woba, which is you know that's about 10 or 15 percent above league average. But he had a 382 x woba, which is this almost the same as Alex Bregman's ex woba. That's how good Marcelo Zuna should have been. And that's why I think it'd be a great move if the Cardinals brought him back, because I think he's primed for a second breakout year. Um, it, but Ozuna, he, I don't know how, because everyone agrees with me that, on this. I don't know how he posts above average defensive numbers. He, watching him field the left field position is painful. It's truly, truly painful. It's hard to watch. He's he, he has no arm. He's out there like stutter stepping every other second. Like I don't know what what is this deal with? I mean, I know he has shoulder problems and watch his swing. It looks like his shoulder is about to break off his his uh, body every swing he takes, but man, he he can't even look like he can run. And then Castellanos, obviously a great hitter but can't field as well. So if the Cardinals signed Ozuna, what do I think he would sign for? I honestly have no idea. I've seen no reports saying this is what Ozuna is asking for. I've seen everything from three years, forty-five million to four years, eighty million. I have no idea what this is going to be. But I think the Cardinals should try to sell him on the idea that they are going to bring in Nolan Arenado, and they are going to try to win, like absolutely go all in for that twenty twenty World Series championship. And then for Castellanos, I think he's going to get around $50 million, I would say. I think I'm pretty confident in a like three-year $50 million deal with Texas. And he can join, you know, younger former top prospect Willie Calhoun. Uh, you got that up-and-comer Nick Solak, who not a lot of people have heard of, but he's really good. Joey Gallo, Danny Santana, a lot of those outfield options. Ozuna would be joining, I mean, the Cardinals has still, despite trading Randy Rosarena in the – um, Matt Libertor, Jose Martinez deal. They still have Tyler O'Neill, Harrison Bader, Dexter Fowler, Tommy Edmond, Lane Thomas, and Dylan Carlson as their outfield options for 2020. Bringing in Ozuna would even crowd that further. So if an Arenado deal would happen, it could not only would it make them much better, but it would clear a space for Ozuna to come back. And it, I think the perfect, I don't know why no one has thought of this, but the perfect deal, trade Fowler. Trade Dexter Fowler in the deal, who used to be a Colorado Rocky. And that will pay off for over half of of Arenado's contract. But then use that money to go up for Ozuna. Because this team's World Series championship uh, window is starting to open back. It closed back in 2015. It was shut for 2016, 27, 2018. And in my opinion, it was closed for 2019. They had no shot this year. Um, And I think it's going to open. I think 2020 is the year it opens. And this is the best they've looked coming into a season in a long time. And then for the Rangers, they got to sell Nick Castellanos on the idea, hey, we're going to be good. Remember, look look at our teams back in 2015, 2016. Yeah, we kind of got murdered by the Blue Jays in the playoffs back then. But this new ballpark is going to motivate us. And we're going to be a good team. So I think think, uh, that's where he's going. 
So now let's get into some, into some interesting extensions that have happened recently. The tw Minnesota Twins extended their power hitting third baseman, Miguel Sano, to a three year, $30 million extension. So that guaranteed years covers this year, and or it I believe it covers one of his um, free agency seasons. And then there's also, also a $14 million club option, which would extend the deal to four years, $44 million. And that so that would this basically extends Sano's free agency two years removed from what it would be before this. So Miguel Sano, I think he's pretty underrated. I know he's bad defensively, negative five DRS, negative six point seven UZR, and his batting average isn't great, two forty seven. But you can't look at that. Even I mean, if you're a fan of the um, older stats, he still had thirty four home runs this year in a limited amount of time. He had 79 RBIs, he had 922 OPS, he had a 137 WRC+, plus, a 378 WOBA. I, he's a, I think he's a great corner piece, and I think his value would actually go up if the, man, if the twin the Twins, after talking about Sano, the Twins should absolutely sign Donaldson. Because having Donaldson and then be, being able to put Sano in a spot where he hopefully wouldn't be awful defensively, that would vastly improve their um, defense and offense because Josh, Josh Donaldson is an underrated defender. But yeah, I'm I'm still not sure what I think of the AL Central. I think the White Sox offseason was great, but a little overrated. I still don't think their rotation's great. I think the Dallas Keuchel signing was an, obviously an overpay. I don't think Nomar Mazzara is going to have a big impact like a lot of people think he will, just because he can hit a 500-foot bomb every once in a while. Uh, we had another extension as well, and I, I'm this one's great. David Peralta, the Diamondbacks extending outfielder, David Peralta to three years, $22 million. Ex uh, He was going to be a free agent after this season, but now he won't hit the free agency, free agency market until after the 2022 season. Three years, $22 million. This dude's going to be making less than $9 million a year. David Peralta, I mean, he's one of the best defensive left fielders in baseball. He had a 10 DRS and 6.2 UZR, and he only played like 100 games this season. Um, and then his offensive numbers weren't great. I mean, they were good. 804 OPS, 107 WRC+, 338 WOBA, 275 batting average. But... Uh, the ex woba 301 is worrying, but he also played a lot of the year injured. And he, in the past, he's put up ex wobas around 350. So I honestly think this is a great, great extension. This is so under the radar. Um, I'm sure most people don't even know that David Peralta got extended. And a lot of people don't even know that much about David Peralta. But he's a great, I think he's, a, he seems like he's a great guy. And He's not going to be making much over the next three years. He's going to make a lot more money. I, don't, I honestly don't know what he was thinking. I guess he just wanted to play it safe. Next, let's talk about our 2019 champion, Nationals. They made a lot of moves recently, including out. So we'll talk about kind of one thing at a time. First, the bullpen. They added Will Harris and re-signed Daniel Hudson, who got probably most famous for getting the last out of the World Series. So one's great and one is not. The great one is Will Harris signing him to what I believe is a well I did not write it down but I think it was on the lo along the lines of three years twenty four million and he had a one fifty ERA which his ERA shouldn't have been that low it was more around the threes but still a three fifteen um, fielding independent pitching a three oh four xFIP a three eighteen Sierra and um, he, I, he strikes out guys. He doesn't give up home runs. And yeah, um, Will Harris is just, wow. I, we, wow. Breaking news right in the middle of my podcast. I'm probably gonna have to, I don't know whether to talk about this or talk about what I had planned. But the Red Sox have just fired Alex Cora. Wow. The reports were saying it wasn't going to happen until the investigation was completed, but the Red Sox fired Alex Cora. Wow. Wow. That's insane. I, I'm, I, I'm actually shocked right now. 
Okay, we're not going to... I'm going to talk about this later. Back to the Nationals. So, yeah, Will Harris, a really solid signing. Uh, he is a little... I think he's older, though, so it's it'll be interesting to see if the deal becomes kind of ugly at the end. But they also signed Daniel Hudson, and I'm sorry to say it, because, I mean, generally these guys who get the last outs of the World Series are like... I mean, obviously you see them get that out hundreds of times, but he's overrated. Yeah, he had a 247 ERA, but he, I mean, he struck out three, almost three and a half batters per nine innings, and he only struck out 8.7 batters per nine innings. He had a 397 fielding independent pitching and a 508 X fielding independent pitching and a 431 Sierra. Eh, he's probably just going to be average. I think he's an average reliever who had a great ERA because he got lucky and he got the last out of a World Series. Um, so we also have some infield signings, and this is the reason I do not believe the Nationals are going to be signing Josh Donaldson. It is because they have just signed not only Eric Thames to a one-year $4 million deal, not only as Drupal Cabrera to a one-year $2.5 million deal, but also Starlin Castro to a two-year $12 million deal. So, and you also presume, or assume, not presume, my bad, that they're going to re-sign Ryan Zimmerman. Ryan Zimmerman is either going back to D.C. or retiring. So I assume the infield for the Nationals is going to be like Eric Thames slash Ryan Zimmerman at first. Um, second base would be Starlin Castro or Asdrubal Cabrera, either one of them. Shortstop Trey Turner, and then third base either Asdrubal Cabrera or Starlin Castro. I don't know who's going to play who. I, I would assume Cabrera plays third and Starlin Castro plays second. And then Howie Kendrick plays everywhere. Um, so the Thames deal, I think this is a great deal. They got him for super cheap. And Thames, his his floor is an, is an average hitter, average uh, pinch hitter and his ceiling is what he did this year in 850 OPS so 116 weighted runs created plus he hits 25 home runs and that was as kind of a platoonish guy for the Brewers they also got as Drupal Cabrera who I mean I think he's going to be I think he's kind of just an average veteran at this point nothing special and then they also got Starlin Castro who uh, I don't really like the, the Castro signing, personally. I think he's not a great player. I think he's overrated because of how, how many hits he gets. People talk about how great he is because he's going to get 3,000 hits in his career. And A, that doesn't mean you're great. I mean, it's a heavy relation to a lot of great players. And B, I, he's not getting 3,000 hits. Um, and we have breaking more breaking news right in the middle of the podcast. The... And my my Braves um, prediction for Josh Donaldson has already gone in the in the gutter, because Josh Donaldson has just signed a four year contract with the Minnesota Twins, according to Mark Feinsand of MLB.com. I, of course, I predict, I predict um, Josh Donaldson signing with the Braves, literally at the beginning of the podcast, and this happens. That's wow. Okay. I don't. I, I think we're gonna. There's no money revealed yet, so I think I'm just gonna talk about this next time and continue on. I just think it's. I don't know whether it's unlucky or lucky that so much breaking news has happened right in the middle of this podcast. But moving on, the Dodgers made some rotation moves. Jimmy Nelson and Alex Wood. Jimmy Nelson uh, was a key part of that Brewers rotation when they were kind of uh, back in the. I mean, he didn't really pitch in 2018 or 2019, uh, but he used to be really good, actually, really underrated pitcher. Uh, back in 2017, which is his, was his last full year, he had a 3.49 ERA, a 3.05 fielding independent pitching. Uh, he struck out 10.2 guys per nine. Uh, he only gave up 0.82 home runs per nine. He had a 4.8 WAR, just a really great season for Jimmy Nelson. And they also brought back Alex Wood. Uh, who they traded to the Reds last offseason on a one-year $4 million deal. $4 million deal. Uh, but he has $10 million of incentives available. And those two guys will kind of join a uh, rotation that includes Clinton Kershaw, Walker Buehler, Kenta Maeda, um, 
maybe Julio Arias. I I would presume Jimmy Nelson isn't going to start right away. I think they I I see them either putting Jimmy Nelson or Kenta Maeda in the bullpen, and then their rotation can be led by Kershaw, Bueller, Wood, those guys. So yeah, I I like both of those signings because both of those guys have been really good in the past, and you know. People have been criticizing the Dodgers this whole offseason for only signing Blake Trinan, who's like a bounce-back project. But I think these two deals, who probably are also bounce-back projects, are really cheap deals with high ceilings. And then the last signing to go over is the Rangers signing catcher Robinson Trinos to a one-year, $6.75 million uh, deal. The... um. With that includes a club option for six point five million dollars. Um, yeah, Tr- Trinos is a pretty underrated catcher in my opinion. He's a great hitter. Uh, he's okay at def- defending, but he's not a good framer. But he's an above average, borderline top ten catcher in the league. And this is a really underrated move for another. Again, another move by the Rangers. If the Rangers can keep getting these kind of deals done, they could definitely finish. Um top three in the AL West. I don't think they're not going to beat out the Astros uh, or the Athletics, but they could definitely, uh, I think it'll be a battle for third place over the, with them and the Angels. And I think both of those teams, because I don't think the Angels did enough either. I think both of those teams will be intriguing to look at next season, but this season, I think they'll, they'll be, uh, you know, with these kind of, uh, these kind of signings above average, but not great teams. Um, some other, one other move I wanted to talk about was Odubel Herrera, who was suspended, I, I don't have the exact, um, number right here, but he was suspended a lot of games, uh, for domestic violence. He was DFA'd by the Phillies, and this guy used to be a great outfielder. I mean, it wasn't too long ago that the Phillies extended him, and they thought he was a pretty good part of their future but my question is what does this mean for the future of these domestic violence players and i think the answer is pretty simple the guys with talent are going to stay in and everyone's going to forget and the guys without talent are going to be um ridiculed and should be people will say they should be out of the league because of their domestic violence when it really it's hypocritical because I don't really hear anyone saying that Roberto Osuna or Roldis Chapman should be out of the league, but I hear a lot of people saying that Addison Russell and guys like Odubel Herrera, who haven't been very good lately, they should not be near ML, Major League Baseball. I think you should either choose one side or the other. I don't think you can say this guy should be in and this guy should be out. Uh, so that's basically it for baseball. Uh, so one thing I wanted to do for this podcast was, at the end, talk a tiny bit about other sports, too, because, obviously, baseball is not the only sport right now, and the offseason makes it one of the more irrelevant sports. But Zion Williamson, I'll do three things right here. Zion Williamson may, might make his debut on Thursday. I, I'm definitely going to be watching that as a baseball fan. Uh, he just looks like he's going to be a really exciting guy to watch, though I don't know if he's going to actually be that good. He might be kind of a Derrick Rose type guy who he's like, when he's playing, he's great, but when he, he just gets injured a lot. Number two, my NFL predictions for this weekend, Packers versus 49ers. I don't see the Packers winning. Uh, I really didn't want them to win this last weekend either, but I think the 49ers... I think at this point, they're probably the favorites to win the entire thing. And then for the Chiefs, Titans, as much as it would be fun to take the Titans, the Titans aren't going to be in the Super Bowl. It's going to be the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes, I think he's going to have another big game. And I I think it's going to be a Chiefs 49ers Super Bowl. And then number three, LSU over Clemson. I didn't really watch much of this game. I really only watched like the fourth quarter, I would say. But uh, the only thing I have to say is, Joe Burrow had an historic season, and now we're going to watch him play for the Bengals next season. So you should probably have made sure you enjoyed him while you could. Uh, And another thing I want to do for the end of this podcast is, at the end of every show, I wanted to make a prediction. I'm not great with predictions, obviously, because at the beginning I said the Braves are going to sign Josh Donaldson. But I'm predicting, I'm making kind of a 
despite all these rumors, the Cardinals aren't going to trade for Nolan Arenado. I have to keep my expectations low as a Cardinals fan. They, are, they aren't going to trade for him. Jeff Passan came out and said that the negotiations have gone nowhere. I don't know if that means just because they haven't progressed very far or if it's because they're far apart on the... They're not eye-to-eye on what the Rockies should be getting back. But I think the Cardinals are going to re-sign Marcelo Zuna, and I think they're going to go in with that roster. I really... I don't think any of these star players are going to be traded. Mookie Betts isn't going to be traded. Francisco Lindor obviously is not going to be traded after Indians GM came out and said... He's planning on him being on the team. Chris Bryant, I mean, we don't actually know with him until his grievance is settled because a team's not going to trade for him until they know whether they're getting one or two years of control with him. But I don't think Chris Bryant's going to be traded either. I think the Cubs' asking price is probably sky high on that, and deservedly so. They shouldn't just be selling off these guys for nothing as much as I would like that. So that's basically going to do it. This was pretty long, but... And I don't expect every episode to be this long. I just had a lot to catch up on. But next episode, probably we'll dive deeper into the Alex Cora firing and the Josh Donaldson signing, along with other moves and news that will happen. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Uh, This was actually a lot easier than I expected. And I think the guys who can go and talk about sports as their jobs every day, those guys are really lucky. So I'm hoping to do this another time soon. I don't really have a set-out schedule, but... Maybe twice a week is what I was thinking. But this is the end of episode one of Baseball Ramble, so I hope you enjoyed it.